This couple faced witchcraft on their wedding day. Yes, you heard that right. Everything was poisoned starting from the wedding cake to the wedding gifts. The wedding was meant to be cancelled, but despite all this, the wedding happened. Even before marriage, someone took away their wedding contributions. Additionally, the husband lost his job and the wife lost her uncle. As if that wasn't enough, they both fell ill after the wedding due to the cursed cake they ate and struggled with extreme poverty later. With neither of them having jobs, life after their wedding was miserable. With no other options, the husband started selling eggs on the streets in hopes of making ends meet. However, this was still not enough, and they were eventually evicted from their house, struggling to find a new place to call home. People around them started whispering, suggesting that the wife brought bad luck. They even advised the husband to leave her if he wanted a better life. Despite everyone turning their backs on them, their love only grew stronger. They chose to face every challenge together. Today they are not just surviving, they are thriving and enjoying life to the fullest as a happy family. <laughs> It makes you wonder, why did they face all these challenges? Was witchcraft a reason behind it? Some stories are hard to believe, which is why I had to meet this couple in person to learn more about their experiences. My name is Justine Godfrey, and I was born and raised in Machakos, Kenya. Ever since I was young, I have had a passion for singing. People have always admired and appreciated my melodies, starting from my primary school years. After finishing high school, I decided to pursue music as a career. My name is Godfrey Maker, and I am a Christian. I am a grown man, married to one wife, and we have one child. I will be sharing my life story both before and after marriage. When Godfrey first saw Justine at a wedding, he immediately knew she was the one. His intuition proved to be right without a shred of doubt. We met at my friend's wedding where we were both part of a group of dancers. I couldn't help but notice her in her long dress, especially when she was singing. In that moment, I thought to myself, oh my God, she's the one. The following day, we found ourselves at a conference where she had a performance. After she finished, I approached her and confessed my love. I also asked her if we could take a picture together, and she couldn't refuse. It was some time in November when I encouraged her to inform her parents that she had met someone special. I did the same and went to my own parents to share the news that I had found the right woman. He was serious and knew exactly what he wanted. He never wanted to waste any time, so they dated with a purpose, even though their relationship was short-lived. Love was in the air, and the couple seemed inseparable. Three months later, they began organizing their wedding, but then challenges arose. I informed her of our plans to get married by next year, and preparations quickly commenced. I paid the dowry and everything was arranged. We selected my wife's cousin to receive the wedding funds through various WhatsApp groups. We secured the venue, and our home in Katengala was prepared. The wedding was just around the corner. But before anything else, my wife warned me not to trust anyone on her side of the family, because she knew they'd get jealous and maybe practice some witchcraft rituals to stop our wedding. I disregarded her advice. I believed that my faith would protect me, so I acted contrary to her counsel. Two weeks prior to our wedding, tragedy struck when my wife's uncle took his own life. During the funeral, the cousin responsible for our finances asked money, which I gave her without hesitation and without consulting my wife. Shortly after, I lost my job as an assistant manager. Days before the wedding, that same cousin claimed her account was blocked and she was unable to transfer our money. It was one problem after another in a very short period of time. 
What initially seemed like a promising wedding began to show signs that it might not even happen, as things were quickly going downhill. It became extremely concerning with few days remaining as my cousin had not yet submitted the money contributed. I was taken aback by her behavior. After our uncle's farewell, we approached her for the money, but she presented us with some fabricated screenshots, asserting that the bank had prevented her from making any transactions. However, we consulted a friend who works at a bank and we found out that the account number she had provided us with did not exist. They were all becoming upset. They regretted placing their trust in someone else and questioned why they hadn't done it themselves. The wedding was fast approaching and they had only a few things in place. They were on the verge of giving up and cancelling the wedding when something incredible occurred. Our closest friends rallied together and contributed whatever they could. Some lent us their cars, others bought chapatis, and others purchased the cake. They all lent a helping hand in various ways, allowing us to have a simple wedding on the smallest budget possible. But nothing could stop us, and the next day we had our wedding. However, during the ceremony, someone cursed our wedding cake. I suffered from a backache and couldn't lift my wife for our wedding photos. We also couldn't afford to pay the cameraman. At the reception, our guests generously showered us with gifts. There was one particular woman who insisted that we open her gift right away. We came to realize later that this woman had packed glasses that were also cursed. Thankfully, people gave us money as wedding gifts that helped cover the cost of decorations and settled all the debts we had accumulated and we were left with just 150 Kenyan shillings. After the wedding, their lives took a turn for the worse. They both found themselves unemployed and frequently fell ill. They had no money, to the point where they couldn't even afford a honeymoon ticket to Mombasa. Despite starting their union in difficult circumstances, they faced it all together. On the first day, we locked ourselves in the house and ate only cake until the third day when we went on a mountain to pray. As we prayed, I was getting better while my wife was getting ill. We dealt with a bigger challenge of facing diseases. At first, it was my husband with a back problem that he got from the wedding. When he recovered, I followed but I got sick for so long that we ran out of everything from food to money. We failed to pay rent, and we ended up going to live with my in-laws so that at least we could survive, as there was no other option left. What followed was a continuous journey of moving from one hospital to another, from one church and pastor to another, all in search of a solution. However, nothing seemed to work. It took so long that some even advised this man to abandon his pursuit, but he kept fighting for his love. Despite multiple hospital visits and extensive medical tests, doctors couldn't diagnose my wife's illness as she continued to deteriorate. Depleted of savings and desperate, we turned to various pastors for spiritual help and were supported by church members while friends distanced themselves. Finally, we visited a pastor who prayed for my wife. The following night, Justine recovered. However, the next day, she fell ill again. The pastor prayed for her once more, and she continued to improve day by day until she fully recovered. For the first time since getting married, they were both happy, and none of them was sick. However, they needed more than just happiness and good health to survive and rebuild their lives from nothing. Without a job and in need of survival, I started selling eggs on the streets. Over time, our business grew and we began supplying hotels and churches. It was during this period that an apostle approached me, alleging that our past difficulties were the consequence of a cursed gift we had received at our wedding. Despite these challenges, my uncle suggested that I should leave my wife, holding her responsible for our misfortunes. However, I disregarded his advice due to my profound love for her. But today, they are happily enjoying life again. The husband has a nice job, and the wife has resumed singing. 
God has blessed them with a child, and they are now parents. It is clear that what they went through has strengthened them instead of tearing them apart. Haters rejoiced, thinking my time was near, but thankfully God restored my life. Now, I am happy to announce that I have regained my calling and have a YouTube channel called Justina Jeffrey TV. I upload all of my content there, including the many songs and videos I am currently working on. To support us, please visit our channel and find a way to connect with us. God bless you. I would advise people facing challenges to first identify the root cause. As the Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Next, it is important to believe in Jesus. Through prayer and support, we were given a second chance, and I was able to find a job to provide for my family. I am truly grateful. Godfrey and Justine went through a hell of a life after their wedding. They were tested to the limit, but the couple never stopped believing in each other and never stopped loving each other. Now, they're happier than ever before. In a world full of uncertainty, they remind us that together, we can overcome anything. Thank you for watching. I am Simon Greenwood, and this is Aframax English. Remember to subscribe.